We are now going to look at fill and stroke and how we can work with those in InDesign and we'll do a little brief introduction into some things with color as well but color will be examined more closely in a later video. Before we really get into things I wanted to also show you how to use the line tool and how we can use that to separate areas and make some line strokes. So I'm going to hold the shift while I draw. Holding the shift while I use my line tool will allow me to draw in a perfectly straight line in whatever direction I'm drawing. Now something to keep in mind with a line stroke is that it needs to have a stroke size and a stroke color to it. So coming down to our colors, we're going to pick a stroke color and weight and even though I have a fill it really doesn't matter what that fill is in this case because line strokes do not have fills so you could have that on any color in the world it would not matter. Let's take a closer look at this line and just to show you we have some options with that you saw me change the size we also have um, different types of lines we can use. Some of those get a little crazy, um, but note that you can change those all in this drop-down menu. Every object, whether that be a rectangle frame that we're putting photos in, they have a fill and a stroke. A rectangle tool, fill and a stroke. And even our text has a fill and a stroke. And there's multiple ways that you can work with these fills and strokes for objects. So let's start and talk about type. You can of course change your fill up here and your stroke here. To change the weight of that stroke, you actually need to pull up the stroke panel and make changes to it. You can also change it here, but note that whatever is in front and right now that is the stroke is what you are changing. So sometimes you get to a place where you'd actually want to change the stroke, you mistakenly change the fill, just make note that you need to come over here and adjust that. Sometimes that's hard to visualize so oftentimes this is a a little more clear way to make changes to your fill and stroke with both the swatches panel and up here you can change the tint of that fill and stroke. With your objects you also have a fill and a stroke you can work with. One of the things I like to do is pull colors from objects in the image to be used elsewhere in the design. So we're going to select that color and because I had that frame selected it automatically just filled with that color. If I now switch to this rectangle, use my eyedropper tool and I'll pick that and I can just go around and color pick and drop my color down onto my boxes. My objects can also have transparency applied and transparency is different than a tint. So we're going to take our object and we're going to first look at changing an object's total opacity. As you see, we can start seeing underneath. Now let's compare that to a tint. Now because I actually haven't added this specific color to my swatches, I can't yet access a tint. So we're going to drag that down to my swatches Notice when I did that, I can now access and change the tint. So let's change this to 80%. And you can see that's the difference between an opacity effect and a tint. A tint will make the color lighter, an opacity will make the transparency greater. So one of the things you'll want to look at when you're looking at printing is how do transparencies appear with various printers, how do they handle those. Um, some of those cannot 
may not look as you expect and I would definitely ask for examples from my printer for those. You can also, and we'll do that with this example, pull this up here, adjust simply the fill rather than both the fill and the stroke, which is what we did before using the object. Now that's not as big of a deal here because these don't necessarily have strokes to them, um, but just make note that that is different. Other things you can do with your effects panel is add special effects to that. And so things like a drop shadow and you can change the angle of it and the size of it and the diffuseness of it and even the color of it. And always checking your preview to see what that looks like. Finally, on objects, um, when we were in type we needed to go over to our stroke panel to change the stroke. You can do that with your rectangle frame or rectangle selected. You can also change that up here. Let's get a large stroke on that. And just to show you those same strokes that we applied to this line can also be applied to the edge of any of our objects. Although I will say that this would probably head you in a bad direction design wise. In our next video we're going to look at how you can use the pen tool to create unique shapes.